a, quote, union buster, scab, and insurrectionist. That's what a top Teamsters executive is calling Trump as the former president meets with the union. Trump is trying to get a big endorsement, and, and make no mistake, an endorsement from a major union, Teamsters union, uh, would be would be unprecedented. Vice President uh, at large, John Palmer, who will be my guest in a moment, though refused to attend the union meeting today with Trump. This is just days after Palmer sent a letter to the Teamsters president, Sean O'Brien, where he argued that Trump should not be welcomed by the 1.3 million member union, saying in part, quote, he's a known union buster, scab, and insurrectionist. We should never entertain dialogue with a candidate with such an anti-union record. John Palmer is now out front. So, John, uh, you know, we understand this meeting happened today, and I know you chose not to go. Uh, Trump called the meeting, quote, very strong. He sounds very confident that the Teamsters will endorse him, obviously, your union. 1.3 million Americans are a member of your union. Uh, what is What have you heard uh, about what happened in that meeting today? Well, I saw a list of questions. There were a lot of tough questions asked uh, concerning where he stood and, and, and uh, you know, what he might do in his next term. Um, but my, my sense is, you know, we already know who this man is. Uh, you judge people by the actions that they take, right? Um, and, and all the things that I said, scab, union buster, insurrectionist, are provable beyond a doubt. Uh, you know, he crossed the picket line with the IATSE people. Uh, he hired uh, union busters to staff the Department of Labor, uh, the National Labor Relations Board, which affects us greatly because I'm a, uh, an organizer and, and I've had to deal with the Labor Board. And, uh, um, you know, as far as the insurrection goes, um, you know, we all saw what happened. It, there's folks that want to somehow dress that up as a, as a vacation day for some folks. And um, that's very unfortunate. Do, do you think, though, um, from what you're, you're hearing from your, your peers and your union, your, those of you running the union, do you think Trump really has a chance at getting this endorsement? I, I would say zero. I, I don't believe he does have a chance. Uh, I was disappointed in the the appearance, uh, you know, particularly the press conference that occurred after the the meeting. I, I think it it sends out a sort of, you know, it was in my letter where I, I suggested that it's a tacit endorsement. Um, you know, he he is not going to do anything for labor. He never has done anything for labor, and frankly, he's not a trustworthy individual. So after the meeting today, and you know, you, you talk about the, the, the when he spoke, but. He was asked about your criticism specifically, and I wanted to play part of that exchange. Here it is. One of the Teamsters executive board members objected to your visit today, calling you a known union buster, scab, and insurrectionist. What's your response yeah, well, to that? They're wrong about that. I, I've dealt with unions for my whole life. I've had a great relationship with unions. So what do you say to that? John, and you've looked at his um, history with, with unions. Great relationship with unions, he says. I, I, think, I think we know about uh, Donald Trump's long history and uh, 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 inability to tell the truth. I mean, I just uh, laid out exactly why I said those three things. And uh, uh, he's guilty of all those things. Um, it's, it's fact. You know, a rock is a rock. When you thump on it with your knuckles, your knuckles are going to bleed. Um, so, so I know folks live in information bubbles and and take on different viewpoints, but uh, we all need to need to look for truth. And as leaders, it's, 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 it's incumbent upon us to tell the truth to our members. Now, I served in the military. I'm very proud of that service. My whole family did. I also believe that, the, you know, I lost an uncle in Korea uh, who I never knew, but, but people died so we could have the right to disagree. I, I, I'm fine with people having a different viewpoint, but as a leader, it's my responsibility to lay the facts out for folks. And and this isn't for working men and women in general. Let's let's go beyond unions. Uh, everything you know, the good things that happen with unions transfer into the non-union workplace. So, it, so uh, yes, go ahead. So well, no, no, I I know obviously you know you made it clear that you don't support Trump actually that you do support Biden. But I I want to ask you something about your union itself, right? And just what's happened in this country in terms of, you know, political shifts, right? 1.3 million members, as I mentioned a moment ago. Our Harry Anton's been going through the numbers and, you know, he's pointed out that the Democratic edge with union voters has declined dramatically, right? In 1948, it was a 62 point edge, 21 points now in 2020. So do you worry that a lot of people in your union simply don't see it this way, that they would be happy to have the union endorse Trump. I, I think it is a cause for concern. And I think 
you know, sometimes as, as we rise in the, the ranks of leadership, we, we become disconnected from the membership. And, and as a, you know, as an organizer, a person who, who, you know, education is everything. Yep. And, and instead of endorsing somebody or, or, or playing footsie with somebody who clearly isn't going to work in our best interest, we should be out there talking to our members. The facts are pretty clear uh, as to why this man should not, should not get our endorsement. I'm certain he, will, he won't. All right. Well, thank you very much, John. I appreciate your time. Thank you.